guys welcome back to another video i just want to make a short video on what uh first the code that i had on the car which was a p0505 which is related to the idle air control system now i immediately went to the idle air control valve right here and started looking at basically the causes of what was going on it was basically i knew there was air either leaking out of the system or leaking into the system uh, leaking out out of the system is a lot easier to see and diagnose than leaking in because i mean it's easier to you can put a smoke uh smoke machine and basically see the air coming out i even did that but because the air was leaking into the system, you couldn't see the smoke coming out of anywhere, uh, out of the vacuum system, any of the hoses or anything. So it was a lot, it was very hard to diagnose. I even had to buy a new idle air control valve, which they don't sell new. Uh, a few videos ago, I showed you that I did buy one new, and I still think that one worked. I'll tell you later on in the video, but I did get another one. It still didn't fix the problem. I thought it was, again, I thought it was just another idle air control valve that was faulty. But, I checked the all the hoses for the idle air control system. I'll put a diagram, but it's basically all these hoses. Uh, this, I'm pretty sure is related to it, if I remember correctly. There's a lot of hoses that are related to it. The PCV right here, uh, where it connects to the intake manifold. Everything I checked and nothing even seemed to be leaking. Like, I didn't, I didn't feel that anything was leaking. I would put uh, my hand over it. I didn't feel any air coming out, just as a precaution. I even replaced all of the hoses, so you can see, even compared to old videos, this is a new hose with new clamps. This is a new hose with new clamps. The two hoses that go into the idle air control valve, you can see one down there, and there's one here change those with the new clamps everything i even put a honda bomb in between this and the intake manifold let me see if you can see that you could barely see it but i didn't put a lot of it because i didn't want it to get inside of the idle air control valve but yes i even did that i even put a little bit right here on this hose just because it looked like it was possibly that it was not anything related to that uh the other thing i did was I changed the fast idle air valve. I removed the stock one. I looked into it. I tightened the bypass for the coolant. That didn't fix the problem. I replaced all the hoses for that as well. So you can see here this hose, this hose down here, this one. Replaced it with the clamps, everything. Nothing seemed to work with this car. This car got me so frustrated that I literally didn't drive it for months because. It was undrivable. It had that idle surge thing. Um, I kept looking for the problem and I could not find it. So, the only way I was able to at least calm down the idle surge was uh, turning this on the idle air control valve. Did that, it calmed it down, but it was sometimes what happened when I was just stopped at a light. It would like, it wouldn't surge. Like it wouldn't surge as before, which it would go from like one, uh, one thousand RPM to like two, and three thousand. But it would like, you would hit the gas, and then it would like go from one to like thirteen hundred, like really quick. And then it would almost feel like the car was gonna stall without me pressing on the clutch pedal or anything like that. Change the the map sensor didn't do anything. Change the throttle uh, sensor back here didn't do anything I changed all of this did not do anything so what ended up happening was that I got this car when I did the h2k video the on the k series manifold on the h series engine when I did that video uh, I had to take it to the shop because I tried to do everything myself but I couldn't get to the bottom nuts holding the uh, intake manifold to the engine so even when I took it to the shop, they told me that they basically had to, I wouldn't say torch them, but as soon as he uh, removed the nuts, there was he had to get new ones because those were gone in bad condition. 
and it gave him trouble to take them off. So I knew I couldn't do it. I even tried to do it, but I wasn't able to do it. But the point is, uh, I was looking down here and I could hear a hissing sound. So I knew there was air uh, somewhere coming out. I thought it was basically air coming out, but it was air going into the system. And I'm going to show you the picture. There's, uh, I forgot the name of it, but it has something to do with the, uh, there's a vacuum system. It's part of the vacuum system. It's like this uh, thin metal box. I think it's plastic. It's under the manifold. So I put my hand down there. I felt it. Even when I covered over the the, the place where it was leaking, it was a small hole. Um, I found it, covered it with my hand, and I could feel the car, even the engine, uh, return back to normal. So I did that. Uh, what ended up happening was that the holes basically broke and it broke with the uh, Plastic piece inside of it. So I had to take it out glue it back on and basically do All of that for the car to To return to normal, but even when I did that it had other codes it had a knock sensor code and I even had to change the knock sensor, so it was actually not that bad. I tried to make a video for you guys, but I wasn't able to because I didn't have the right tools to remove the knock sensor. And it was it was just the best thing to do to take it to somebody who could do the job. I actually got a $20 knock sensor, so I will link that in the description, the exact one I got, if you guys want to try that. But it did fix my issue. Um, I saw that the OEM one cost $200, and I was not... I rather I was I was more comfortable seeing if the $21 if the $20 one would fix it instead of the $200 option. Uh, but the point is, I got a P0171 which is uh, running lean condition, and that one was a little bit harder to diagnose. So again, I thought it was related to air leaking into the system. I checked again, nothing, and what ended up being the cause was the flex pipe for the exhaust it was actually broken it wasn't visibly broken like if you looked under it you couldn't see it because it wasn't that uh, that visible but it was like cracked and when a new one was welded in it fixed everything I even put the injector cleaner and the fuel the fuel system cleaner I put uh, on one tank I put a fuel system cleaner and then the other tank I put an injector cleaner and even that didn't fix it so that's just a heads up for anybody who's having the is the issues that I had. These are the possible causes. Make sure you look into it and don't get confused just because you see idle air control system. That doesn't automatically mean it's the idle air control valve. From researching also, I found out that the H22s are also very sensitive with their intake side of, of things. So with all the air and anything, I would suggest to honestly just keep it stock. If you are going to modify it, make sure that you go to someone who knows how to do it or make sure that you have time to fix any bugs and issues you might have. So I hope this helps someone. This is the reason why I did it. I could have uh, just kept modifying the car and not talked about the issue, but I do uh, enjoy just sharing things to help people out and i hope this video does so thanks again for the support uh, i will see you guys next time thanks for watching the video